Bonsoir et bienvenue à ce webinaire. Dzień dobry, witam gorąco wszystkich na dzisiejszym webinarium. Je suis Thierry Ligonier, le directeur général du groupe Dalival. Nazywam się Thierry Ligonier, jestem dyrektorem generalnym grupy Dalival. IFO est la structure de recherche et développement de Dalival. IFO jest strukturą badawczo-rozwoją grupy Dalival. Spécialisé dans la création, l'expérimentation et le développement de nouvelles génétiques de fruits à pépins et à noyaux. I specjalizuje się w tworzeniu, testowaniu i rozwijaniu nowej genetyki owoców ziarnkowych i pestkowych. Nous présenterons aujourd'hui deux variétés de pommes, canopy et tonic, et un nouveau porte-greffe, le M200. Zaprezentujemy dzisiaj dwie odmiany jabłek, canopy i tonic oraz nową podkładkę M200. Te trois innovations są commercializées librement sur le marché. Te trzy innowacje będą dostępne na rynku w ramach programu wolnej sprzedaży. Emmanuel? Bonsoir, je suis Emmanuel de Laparon, responsable du développement chez IFO. Dzień dobry, nazywam się Emmanuel de Laparon, jestem odpowiedzialny za rozwój nowych odmian w IFO. Avec mon équipe, nous sommes en charge du lancement commercial des, des nouveautés créées par IFO ainsi que le, ses partenaires dans le monde. Wraz z moim zespołem jesteśmy odpowiedzialni za komercyjne wprowadzanie nowych odmian i podkładek pochodzących z IFO i od naszych partnerów na całym świecie. Ce webinar fait suite au fil des chez IFO fin octobre. To webinarium jest kontynuacją prezentacji odman, która odbyła się w IFO pod koniec października. C'est l'un des six webinars organisé par Dalival pour, pour présenter Tonic, Canopy et M200 en Europe cette semaine. Jest to jeden z sześciu webinariów zorganizowanych przez Dalival w tym tygodniu w celu zaprezentowania Canopy, Tonika i M200 w całej Europie. Ce webinar comporte donc trois parties. Nasze dzisiejsze webinarium składa się z trzech części. Chaque partie commence par une vidéo et sera suivie par une séance de questions-réponses. Każda z nich rozpoczyna się filmem wideo, po którym nastąpi sesja pytań i odpowiedzi. Vous pourrez poser vos questions durant, le, durant la vidéo via le chat ou le module conversation. Pytania można zadawać w trakcie trwania filmów za pośrednictwem funkcji czatu lub konwersacji. Sans attendre, commençons par Canopy, notre nouvelle pomme verte. Także nie czekajmy więcej, zaczynajmy od Canopy, naszego nowego zielonego jabłka. Hello everybody, my name is Florian Guida and I'm working for IFO and Dalival as a variety project manager. Hello everybody, I'm Frédéric Bernard, manager of IFO and we are very glad to introduce to you the new variety Canopy. I will first present you the story of Canopy. Uh, IFO company was created in 2004. Since its uh, very, very beginning, one of the objectives of our Apple breeding program was to create a new green variety to be an alternative to Granny Smith and having the scab resistant gene RVI6. In addition, the target was also to create a variety that was also as green as Granny Smith and remains green after storage. And finally, that is not more sensitive to pink blush development. So Canopy was born by a cross carried out in 2004. The seedlings from those uh, pips were inoculated by scab to discard all the ones that were not resistant to scab. We finally obtained 166 different hybrids planted for the first step and evaluated for four to five years in the orchard. In the next step, which is called the level one, only five candidates were remaining and we planted four trees of each. Those candidates were evaluated again for four to five years And finally, the last stage called level two was planted only with one candidate, which is Canopy, that was still performing, performing very well in the orchard and confirming its interest as an alternative to Granny Smith. In the end, in the end it took 
almost 20 years to create Canopy, from the crossing to the decision to launch it on the market and to test it in many European countries. These European trials have confirmed the potential of Canopy across the continent. In terms of appearance, you can see on the pictures that Canopy looks very similar to Granny Smith. Sometimes, depending on the climatic conditions, Canopy can develop some lenticels with resetting. In terms of eating qualities, the taste profile of Canopy is dominantly acidic. The observations carried out by the French experimental station of La Morinière show that the level of acidity of Canopy is very similar to the one of Gran Granny Smith. In terms of bricks index, which represents the sugar level, Canopy is slightly sweeter than Granny Smith, and the bigger difference is due to the higher firmness of Canopy compared to Granny Smith. On the second picture, we show the results from testing sessions held at IFO on an unexperienced test panel of consumers. The trends are comparable to the measurements from La Morinière, with the same level of acidity, but a higher sweetness and a higher firmness for Canopy. Finally, the texture, the juiciness and the intensity of the aroma are all higher for Canopy compared to Granny Smith. We can then conclude that Granny Smith consumers will also appreciate Canopy. I now give the floor to Florian Guida, who will present the agronomic performance of Canopy. Thanks, Frédéric, for your presentation. Uh, now you've seen that Canopy and Granny Smith are very similar in terms of fruits. Uh, let's see what makes Canopy special on a grower perspective. Let's start with the tree shape. Uh, every grower knows how it's difficult to properly manage a Granny Smith tree with big branches, blind wood issues. Uh, you can see uh, a diagram of a Granny Smith tree on the right side of um, this diagram. Uh, canopy is more similar the, to Gala and Golden Rinder uh, with many balanced fruiting uh, branches and no blind wood issues, as you can see on the left of the diagram. So this makes Canopy easier to grow and uh, more productive because you have more uh, fruiting branches. The second strength of Canopy is its tolerance to pests and diseases. Uh, genetically, genetically speaking, Canopy has resistance to scab with the RVI6 gene and tolerance to rosy aphids uh, with the gene DPFL LG8. Uh, so you could say that it's a good start, uh, but how it's performing uh, in the orchard? To answer these questions, uh, so we sent a survey to the resource stations uh, trialing Canopy in Europe. Uh, here on this map, you can see the station which sent us their feedback. We divided them into three categories uh, for each pest and disease which have been evaluated, starting with scab, when rosy aphids, European cankers, and powdery mildews. The first category represents uh, the stations which have found canopy more susceptible uh, to these diseases than Granny Smith. The second category is for the stations which uh, found the same level of susceptibility. And the third category is uh, for the stations which found canopy less susceptible than Granny Smith. So let's see the results, uh, starting with SCAB. Uh, so 88% of the stations uh, have found uh, canopy less susceptible to SCAB than Granny Smith. It's not that surprising given the gene of resistance uh, we have on canopy, but it's still a very positive result. Now, if we look on rosy aphids, European cankers and powdery mildews, uh, we also have very good results because at least half of the stations have found a canopy and granny smith uh, with the same susceptibility. But even more interesting is that uh, many of them find uh, canopy less susceptible than Granny Smith to these diseases. Uh, so it's, it's quite positive uh, overall. And we can say that uh, in most of cases, canopy is performing similar or be better than Granny Smith uh, for the main pests and, and diseases uh, we, we evaluated. Since canopy is a green variety, uh, you could imagine to use it as a pollinator. Uh, in terms of genetic compatibility, canopy carries uh, the same S allele gene 
which make uh, Granny Smith a good pollinator. So we are talking about S23. Uh, so as Granny Smith is compatible with most of the commercial variety, it is also the case uh, for canopy. In terms of uh, pollination period, uh, so canopy uh, blooms at the same period as Granny Smith and uh, within the same range of dates. So we have evaluated it on uh, the European network I've just pre presented before. Uh, since we have these good two parameters, we also wanted to evaluate the potential of pollination uh, on site. So we did some trials uh, at the I4 research station. A pollination trial is very easy. So you pollinate manually uh, several flowers and then you count how many fruits you obtain from these flowers. In our trial, we pollinated 15 flowers per repetition. And here on this diagram, you can see uh, the number of fruits we have obtained from these uh, flowers. Uh, overall, the conclusion is that uh, Canopy and Granny Smith have the same pollination potential just because we have obtained roughly the same number of fruits, even if you see minor difference, for example, on Gala the number of fruits is uh, is very limited. So canopy uh, seems to be quite a good uh, pollination option, especially if uh, you're working with scab uh, resistant blocks where canopy will express uh, its full potential. We can't uh, finish without talking about uh, harvest and storage potential. So in terms of harvest dates, we have observed that uh, canopy can be harvested uh, one week later than Granny Smith if you want to have the same uh, um, starch uh, degradation. In terms of storage potential, uh, so several years of evaluation uh, in partnership with the CTFL La Morinière didn't show any uh, difference uh, between canopy and Granny Smith, especially on uh, scald uh, susceptibility. So same uh, same storage potential, same susceptibility to scald uh, between Granny Smith and, uh, and Canopy. Then a very important point to be mentioned is that Canopy is maintaining the green uh, coloration you have at harvest uh, during uh, its storage. Before we conclude, uh, we want to give a flow to uh, the La Morinière uh, station and Ségolène Danda will share her experience on the potential of, of Canopy. Hello everybody, I'm Ségolène Danda. I work at uh, CTIFL La Morinière in France, in Loire Valley, and I will present you um, my experience on the Canopy. I will present you the synthesis of three years of observation in CTIFL La Morinière. Um, so about uh, harvest data, we can see on the first graph that we have trees on a conventional uh, orchard and we have trees on organic orchard. For the both, we have uh, on cumulated uh, higher production uh, for canopy than for challenger. On the second graph, we can see that, um, that um, sizing for organic orchard um, and we can see the same graph for um, conventional or chub. On this graph, um, we can see on the cumulative that we have a smaller fruits for canopies and for challenger. Um, we also can see that we have 20% uh, fruits um, too big on challenger. And uh, we can see on the cumulative for canopy that we have 20% uh, fruits uh, too small. Um, we can see that the yield for canopy is uh, higher than for challenger because we have uh, more fruits. Um, about susceptibility, we can see that uh, like in uh, the European results, um, we have the same result on uh, La Morinière. Um, uh, in Loire Valley. Um, we can see uh, also that we have a reset uh, on, um, on the apples of uh, canopy. Um, in the organic orchard, uh, it's due to the, the application of copper on, the, on our uh, organic program, which uh, induces uh, these marks. 
On this slide, we can see that the maturity of canopy is later than challenger. On the first graph, we can see the stars regression. Um, the one color is one year of production and is one orchard. So in 2021 and 2022, the two first years of production, uh, we harvest challenger and canopy at the same date. Um, and we can see that for the same date, we have a difference of one point or two points uh, of stars regression. In 2023, we try to uh, harvest Challenger and Canopy at the same stars regression. So we have 10, about 10 days of difference between the two uh, varieties in uh, conventional orchard and in organic orchard. About sugar level, we can see that we always have um, sugar level higher for canopy than for uh, challenger in organic orchard and in conventional orchard. Uh, even if we have um, more production in um, in uh, with canopy and uh, than with the challenger. About the scale, we we have we have. Uh, done trials uh, in three of us the scal. In 2021, uh, we didn't see difference between Canopy and Challenger. And in 2022, uh, we didn't see scal on the both varieties. We, we will um, then try trial um, in 2023 with the, the new uh, harvest. So Canopy uh, seems to be a good alternative to Challenger in our condition um, with uh, with these uh, three, uh, three years of observation, and we will uh, continue this observation uh, in La Morimia. Thanks, Segolen, for this very positive uh, feedback. Um, so to conclude with, Canopy is an apple for Granny Smith consumers. It's an easy to grow variety with good tolerances to diseases. And it's a good alternative as a pollinator. So definitely, uh, Canopy is the scab resistant apple that challenges Granny Smith, no matter if it's in full block or as a pollinator, as an organic or as a conventional variety, we are sure that it will fit your child and we are now at your disposal to answer any of your questions. Także prosimy teraz o zadawanie pytań na czacie. Tu pierwsze pytanie było, czy są jakieś odzawienia na, na tej odmianie? To przetłumaczę tylko ekspertom. Donc la, la première question, est-ce qu'il y a des lucettes sur, sur cette variété? Alors, bah, c'est euh, effectivement une, euh, une variété qui peut avoir un petit peu de recettes autour des lenticelles, un peu comme ce qu'on voit sur euh, le clone euh, d'origine de Granny Smith. Euh, mais dans la plupart des conditions, euh, ce recette reste autour des lenticelles. Je, je te laisse Il y a un peu de recettes autour des lenticelles, mais pas dans tous les conditions. Et il n'y a pas de problème dans les sadas, surtout conventionnels. W sadownictwie natomiast ekologicznym trzeba uważać na stosowanie produktów, które się właśnie używa w tych sadach. Ale to nie jest jakiś problem z odzawianiem przy tej odmianie. I donc effectivement quand on est en certaines conditions avec donc la culture biologique par exemple où on a des produits qui peuvent augmenter le recette, il faut être vigilant. Także tu kolega jeszcze podpowiada, że właśnie przy produkcji ekologicznej trzeba uważać na produkty, które się stosuje, aby tego zawiania nie było. Après, si on continue uh, de parler de l'apparence du fruit, uh, c'est très important de préciser que uh, la pomme reste verte, uh, même après stockage. <coughs> Co jest jeszcze ważne przy tej odmianie, że przy przechowaniu, długim przechowaniu, ta odmiana pozostaje wciąż zielona, nie, nie żółknie w chłodnie, tak jak przy Granny Smith. Pojawiło się drugie pytanie, przeczytam dla wszystkich, czy w warunkach klimatycznych Polski nie będzie rumieńca, późny zbiór i różnica temperatur między dniem a nocą? 
Donc, il y a une nouvelle question, Florian. Est-ce que dans les conditions climatiques en Pologne, on n'aura pas de... Euh, on n'aura pas de changement de couleur, hein, donc elle va devenir euh, rose un petit peu, la, la face rose euh, qui va apparaître, car c'est une récolte tardive. Et la oui. différence de température euh, la nuit et le jour euh, fait des fois ça euh, sur certaines euh, variétés. Alors pour le moment, notre réseau d'essais en Europe euh, a, a démontré qu'on avait plutôt tendance à avoir moins de face rosée sur euh, Canopy que sur Granny Smith. Mais c'est des premiers résultats, donc il faut être prudent et, euh, et voir comment, euh, comment elles se comportent à l'avenir. Pierwsze nasze próby i pierwsze badania wykazują, że tego rumieńca jest zdecydowanie mniej niż przy grani Smith, ale jak stwierdziliśmy na początku, jest to nowa odmiana i badania na, nadal trwają, także trzeba nadal to obserwować i w późniejszym terminie stwierdzimy, czy tak nadal będzie, że ten rumieniec na kanopi jest dużo mniejszy i mało widoczny. Następne pytanie. Przez jak długo były przechowywane jabłka? Troisième question, Florian. Pendant combien de temps on a gardé les pommes au frigo? Alors, on a fait des, des évaluations avec un institut français qui s'appelle La Morinière, où les fruits ont été conservés jusqu'au mois de mars, euh, sans problème particulier, notamment au niveau du scald. Euh, on n'a pour le moment euh, pas observé plus de scald sur euh, Canopy que sur Challenger, avec des régressions d'amidon qui étaient euh, comparables à ce qui se fait en Challenger en commercial. Donc, observons la journée d'aujourd'hui en station de recherche La Morinière, c'est une grande station de recherche en France. Les yabłka ont été maintenues jusqu'à mars et il n'y a pas eu de problèmes et de maladies de maladies. Il n'y a pas eu de problèmes, il n'y a pas eu de problèmes. Donc, sur la journée d'aujourd'hui, ce sont de très bons résultats. Mirek, on peut, sauf s'il y a vraiment d'autres questions, on peut passer à la suivante si tu veux. Je le pense, oui. On va passer à, à la variété suivante. Je prédis mes terrasses de colline et Odmiane. Donc, s'il y a un message à, à faire passer euh, concernant Canopy, c'est une nouvelle variété verte dans laquelle nous, on voit du potentiel commercial réel de par son gustatif qui plaira aux consommateurs de Granny Smith et de par son comportement au verger au bénéfice des producteurs. Także podsumowując tą odmianę kanopi, jest to nowe zielone jabłko o dużym potencjale rynkowym ze względu na po pierwsze swoje walory smakowe zbliżone do smaku grani, a jednak trochę inne i o nowym zabarwieniu oraz druga duża wydajność w sadzie z korzyścią oczywiście dla sadowników. I maintenant parlons de tonic, la nouvelle pomme bicolore de Ifo. A teraz skupimy się na drugiej odmianie odmianie tonik, jest to nowe dwukolorowe jabłko z IFO. Hi, my name is Margot. I am project development manager at Dalival IFO. And I am Valérie, the aid of bidding at IFO. And we are happy to present to you tonic, the variety with a tonic taste all year round. We observed tonic for the first time in 2007. Its attractive color caught our eye in the orchard. Tonic is a bicolor apple, apple with a bright pink red skin color. From the beginning, we had the feeling that the variety had exceptional storage potential because even after storage, the variety stood out. The variety is not only attractive, it also has a very enjoyable bite thanks to its tonic taste. The harvest parameters of tonic measured for a period of five years by the research station La Morinière in France illustrates well this tonic taste profile. As you can see, the flesh is very firm, with 9 kg per square centimeter, a sugar level of 15 degrees bricks, and a malic acidity of 8.5 grams per liter. Tonic sanguinez at harvest slowly decreases during storage and makes tonic a well balanced apple. In summary, The fruit has a balanced flavor with a high level of sugar and acidity and a firm and juicy texture. This taste profile has also been confirmed in a blind test that was set up by the research station Renfalt in Germany. Tonic was compared to a commercial variety Envy. 
As you can see on the graph, the panel evaluated the flash quality of the two varieties as very similar. Both received high scores on firmness, juice, and crunch. The observed difference between the two varieties is that Envy, the yellow line, is a sweet apple, whereas Tonic, the red line, has a good level of acidity. In other tests carried out by the same research station, Tonic was compared to Brayburn after five months of storage. The result is very clear. Tonic had maintained its eating qualities, while Brayburn in green received a very low score on almost all aspects. The last graph displays a test that was done at IFO by a non-expert panel. The variety was compared to story in her head, the blue line. A variety is known for its storability. Here, the panel perceived the firmness as similar, but tonic scored better on juice and texture. Overall, tonic is appreciated for its eating qualities by the different panels. Now that we've talked about the fruit itself, its look and taste, mango will move on with the tree performance. Tonic has a good performance in the orchard with regular yields and good fruit size. Uh, seven years of observation at the research station La Morinière in France teaches that on average the main fruit size is between 75 and 85 millimeters. These are the orange and gray segments. Um, main, main fruit production is on the terminal bud, which makes this tree easy to prune. And both spindle and fruiting well as training systems are well suited. Especially Tony can thrive well in a fruiting well thanks to the good fruit size and its ability to grow fruit close to the trunk. And for the same reason, mechanical pruning, mechanical pruning is not a problem. The pictures of the ninth leaf trees uh, are trees in fruit well. This picture is taken three weeks before harvest. And next to it is a picture taken at harvest. Uh, these trees are in spindle, fourth leaf trees at IFO. Um, so this picture uh, taken at IFO, um, and here we cut the top of the trees at two meters for practical reasons, which explains the height for these fourth leaf trees. In terms of thinning, tonic belongs to the group of varieties that is relatively easy to thin, which in practice means that we'd recommend a chemical thinning program that is close to golden rather than to that of Gala. Um, on tolerances to pests and diseases, we got feedback from teen research stations in Europe that evaluated the susceptibility of tonic in comparison to Gala on the field, and the result is very clear. Overall, tonic is considered to be less susceptible than Gala for all pests and diseases. All stations agree that tonic is less susceptible to scab than Gala, and also for European canker, 80% of the research stations find tonic less susceptible. When we look at rosy aphids and powdery mildew, about 60% of the station stations find it less susceptible, and the rest judge that tonic is at the same level of gala. Um, on harvest and storage potential, tonic is harvested after Fuji. Fruits can be picked at an advanced level of starch degradation, and because it ripens slowly on the tree and that the fruits don't drop, tonic has a very large harvest window. For the same reason, uh, it's very, uh, very suitable to use mechanical leaf removal. Uh, and as well in storage, the maturation progresses slowly. Fruits can be stored for at least eight months in regular cold storage without one MCP, smart fresh, and still maintain their eating qualities. We've already pushed it to 12 months and discovered that even in regular air, the fruits remain firm and keep some, some level of acidity. This is the picture on the right that show uh, tonic after 12 months of storage. We've let uh, the participants of the field day last October at IFO taste some of these fruits that have been stored for 12 months, and they were very impressed by the texture. Um, of course, you can see that after 12 months of storage, the background of the fruits become uh, yellow. In 2022, the research station KOB Bavendorf in Germany has carried out a storage trial with tonic. 
they stored fruits uh, in 12 different storage modalities at one and three degrees at regular air and co controlled atmosphere with different levels of CO2 and all modalities with and without SmartFresh. And now Bavendorf will share their main findings with you. Hello there, my name is Felix Bücheler. I'm a post harvest researcher at the Lake of Transits Research Center for our food uh, cultivation in southern Germany. I would like to give a very quick summary or overview of our first results or first impressions with the storability of the apple variety tonic. We've now conducted one storage experiment in the past season, have one currently um, going on. So these are some very preliminary results that need to be confirmed. But of course, there is some trends that you can already identify. For our experiment, we had fruit from a local grower. They were harvested in the middle of October and we stored them for six and a half months until so May, middle of May, uh, under different storage conditions, uh, which was then followed by a shelf life simulation where we kept the fruit for seven days at 20 degrees Celsius to basically simulate in what condition the fruit would then arrive at the consumers. So a uh, very quick summary of our results of the quality parameters that we investigated. In the figures there, I show the firmness, the acidity values and the ground peel color of the tonic apples after storage. Um, all of the values are shown of the treatments that were stored at one degree Celsius. On the left in each figure, you can see the values from cold storage without and with NMCP. And on the right, I show the values of CA storage. So that was 1% oxygen and 2.5% uh, CO2. Um, yeah, firmness. In terms of firmness, we could see a very high, very promising firmness conservation of the tonic apple variety. Of course, there was a little bit of a loss of firmness in just cold storage, but this is not really a common practice to keep fruit just under low temperature for this duration. But yeah, we saw a high effectiveness of 1MCP in RA storage. So with additional 1MCP, the values of the time of harvest, so this horizontal line that is shown in the figure, could be 100% maintained. The same thing for CA conditions, even without um, MCP application. So yeah, again, tonic very high firmness uh, maintenance for the storage period, even for the time after the shelf life. Simulation still very high values. Um, Increasing the temperature to 3 degrees Celsius did not show a negative effect on the firmness values uh, in tonic. And there was not really a difference to be found uh, between lower CO2 levels and higher CO2 levels. For 1MCP, of course, in CA conditions, there was little extra benefit regarding the firmness values because the values of the time of harvest could be 100% maintained. Uh, for the uh, acidity values, we saw um, yeah, a little loss of acidity there. That is, of course, to be expected um, due to the respiration of the food. We saw that 1MCP um, uh, application results in a little bit higher acidity values in cold storage. Uh, similar to um, CA conditions, again, there is a um, little difference there. So, yeah. In general, and especially compared to other apple varieties, we see a lower or slower acid loss or acid consumption in this tonic variety. So depending on the customers, on the consumers, this is something that uh, perhaps should be considered for the peer toleration. Um, we saw that um, CA conditions maintain a greener peel color of uh, the apples compared to cold storage. So in the figure, it shows lower values mean a greener peel color than yeah, with the higher values. And yeah, again, generally CA conditions maintains a better or greener peel coloration, which is yeah, just shows um, a fresh or just um, shows a fresh appearance of the fruit. 
one MCP um, has less of an effect on the peer toleration in cold storage and also not in CA. And also what we saw increasing the uh, temperature to three degrees Celsius uh, can in some instances accelerate the changes in peer toleration. So the, uh, in that regard, uh, lower temperatures are to be um, yeah, preferred just based on these results. And overall, what we can see is that under CA conditions with higher CO2 levels of 2.5%, the tonic wine uh, apple variety shows a very high quality conservation, a very promising storage potential, possibly even for longer storage duration, uh, durations that, yeah, remains to be confirmed then of course in further studies. So of course uh, a big component of our food analysis is also the visual evaluation of the fruit material, meaning we're looking for any uh, possible susceptibilities of the tonic variety to the conditions we establish in a room, meaning is there a sensitivity to chilling injuries or to low oxygen stress or fermentation or to higher CO2 levels? And yeah, what we found so far, this is of course only the results of one year, but there were in none of the CA treatments any disorders symptoms to be found related to low oxygen stress. So we didn't find any internal browning symptoms or cavities and also higher CO2 levels of up to 2.5% um, didn't induce any possible skin necrosis. Um, for chilling injuries, same thing, even at the lower temperatures of one degree Celsius, we didn't find any damages yeah, caused by low temperature. Higher temperatures, on the other hand, appeared to increase shriver symptoms a little bit but still in CA storage, the percentage was very low. So this is, um, yeah, must be confirmed in further studies, of course. Um, one MCP appeared to uh, reduce some disorder symptoms, um, also shriveling, shriveling, for example, but again, we had so low percentages that this is something that needs to be seen in further studies. Overall, we can say that um, there were not any, or we couldn't identify in this experiment, any susceptibilities to any of the storage conditions. So that suggests a high flexibility or high storability for the tonic variety. The only thing that we noticed in our fruit material specifically is a uh, yeah, high prominence of scab symptoms. Uh, but that was found across all treatments and that just shows that it was unrelated to the storage conditions and of course is rather related to pre-harvest factors and we know from the farmer, from the grower where we received our fruit material from um, is that there was a sort of a reduced fungicide application strategy so it is unlikely or it's um, not confirmed in any way that tonic has a susceptibility to this pathogen. And this is also, yeah, it is unlikely that this is related to the storage conditions itself, just from, of course, based on the analysis of the quality parameters that I described earlier. And yeah, our disorder evaluation, we can see from our experiment, uh, a very high or very promising storage potential for even longer times, um, of course, again, this is only one year and needs to be confirmed, but the first results are promising. Thank you very much, Felix Buchler, for sharing these results on the storage trial with Tonic. So what should you remember from this presentation? That Tonic is an attractive bicolored apple with good fruit size, that it has high levels of sugar and acidity, with trees that are productive and easy to grow, and most of all, an excellent storage potential. Or another way to say it, tonic is an apple with a tonic taste all year round. Nice to do.
Także teraz przejdziemy do, do pytań. E, tutaj chciałem odpowiedzieć najpierw, bo jest podawana odmiana jako odmiana późna. E, w fiszkach jest podane, że jest zbierana pomiędzy Fuji a Pink Lady, ale tu chciałem uspokoić wszystkich, że jest zbierana w drugiej połowie października, także bliżej Fuji. I pomimo tego późnego terminu zbioru e, sprawdza się w Polsce, bo były posadzone pierwsze drzewka i e, rezultaty są bardzo obiecujące na dzień dzisiejszy. Także nie martwiłbym się tym późnym zbiorem na, na tą chwilę. Teraz może pierwsze pytanie. E, dlaczego ta odmiana nie została odmianą klubową? To la première question, pourquoi cette variété, ce n'est pas une variété club? Peut-être Valérie. E, bonjour. Euh, pour deux raisons. Euh, la, la première, c'est euh, on trouvait qu'il qu qu manquait euh, dans des variétés libres, des, des variétés tardives avec euh, de bonnes qualités gustatives. Donc, on, 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 on tenait à présenter euh, cette variété en libre. Donc, la première chose, il y a eu un pomysl, de cette odmiany zrobić odmianę klubową, ale ponieważ na rynku brakuje dzisiaj dobrych jakościowo późnych odmian i ze względu na swoje walory smakowe postanowiliśmy, że odmiana ta będzie wolna do sprzedaży na rynku. I la deuxième raison, uh, c'est uh, co comme c'est une variété qui, qui a une conservation très facile, uh, um, on pensait que pour les, les producteurs qui font de la vente directe, ça pouvait être une variété très intéressante. I druga rzecz bardzo ważna, jest to idealna odmiana dla producentów zajmujących się sprzedażą bezpośrednią. Także nie trzeba ją daleko wozić, można bardzo łatwo ją sprzedać blisko, blisko produkcji. Kolejne pytanie, które się pojawiło na czacie. W jakim terminie odmiana tonik była zbierana w warunkach niemieckich? Z une question de, de conversation, en quelle date tonik est accueilli en Allemagne? Dans les conditions climatiques en Allemagne. Voilà, je sais pas. Także tutaj, tutaj nie ma bezpośredniej odpowiedzi, bo nie, nie było to badane, ale tak to, co mówiłem, była zbierana tutaj w Polsce w takich już w terminie zbiorczym w końcu, w końcu października. Moi, moi, je sais qu'on l'a, Mirek, je sais qu'elle est recueillie là-bas en même temps que, que Fuji, ce qui, fait, ce qui fait une cueillette autour du, du 15-20 octobre. Hmm. Także Fiona tu podpowiada, która się zajmuje rynkiem niemieckim, że w Niemczech była zbierana tam, gdzie były posadzone drzewka w drugiej połowie października, bo między 15 a 20 października. Donc la question suivante. Kolejne pytanie. Quels sont les défauts de la variété tonic? Jakie są wady tej odmiany? Euh, son principal défaut, c'est sa zone de production, puisque euh, pour, euh, pour la cultiver, il faut être sur une zone où les, les bicolores colorent bien, donc il faut éviter euh, le, le, les, les, le, le, les, pédoclimat, les conditions pédoclimatiques de la zone méditerranéenne. Et, euh, et euh, la, la limite sera aussi euh, pour, le, pour le nord par rapport à, à la date de récolte. Jeśli chodzi o wady, to można tutaj podnieść dwie kwestie. Po, po pierwsze, tonik wymaga specyficznych warunków glebowych i klimatycznych, co ogranicza, co ogranicza nie, nieznacznie obszar produkcji. Dlatego nie należy tej odmiany sadzić w basenie Morza Śródziemnego, ponieważ wybarwienie tam jest bardzo słabe. I tam, gdzie jabłka wybarwiają słabo, przede wszystkim dwukolorowe, nie ma sensu sadzić tej odmiany, po prostu wybarwienie będzie zbyt słabe. A druga rzecz to termin właśnie zbioru, o którym mówiliśmy. Także im bardziej na północ Europy, tym trudniej będzie zbierać tą odmianę, dlatego że, że będzie za późno. Jeśli to będzie już listopad, połowa listopada, na przykład w Skandynawii, ta odmiana się nie nadaje do Skandynawii. W Polsce, tak jak mówiłem, i w Niemczech jest to druga połowa października, także tutaj nie ma obaw i jest to, jest to dobre okno zbioru. Tu as vu, Mirek, la question que, de 17h12 
sur la, car la caractéristique importante qui distingue tonique des autres variétés à part le goût. Ouais. Donc on peut parler de la conservation. Ouais, exactement. Ouais. Donc, je, euh, au przechowanie. Jak długo się przechowuje ta odmiana i czy dobrze się euh, wybarwia właśnie w warunkach euh, polskich. Donc la question suivante, c'est la conservation et est-ce que la coloration se passe bien dans, dans notre climat Je pense que les, les, les conditions en Pologne pour la coloration vont être idéales pour tonique. Et, euh, et pour la conservation, oui, c'est un fruit qui se conserve très bien, sans, même en froid, en froid normal. On, on a des expériences chez nous de, de fruits qu'on qu a fait tenir un an euh, sans souci, euh, sans, sans maladie de conservation euh, sur nos fruits. Także jeśli chodzi o wybarwienie, no to tutaj nie ma żadnego problemu. W Polsce odmiany tego typu wybarwiają się bardzo dobrze, dlatego że mamy różnicę temperatur między nocą a dniem. Także w tej kwestii nie ma żadnych problemów. Jeśli chodzi o przechowywanie, były robione próby i praktycznie po roku czasu jest to jabłko jeszcze do, przeznaczone do konsumpcji i to we zwykłej chłodni. Także Okres przechowywania jest bardzo, bardzo długi przy tej odmianie, bez pojawiania się chorób przechowalniczych. Merci. Merci, Merci pour, uh, pour ces questions sur tonique. Nous, nous répondrons aux questions supplémentaires uh, par email uh, suite à ce webinar. Donc, n'hésite pas à te contacter, toi, Mirek, ou l'équipe de Dalival. Jeśli będą kolejne pytania, bo musimy przechodzić już do następnej e, trzeciej części, to proszę o zadawanie je po, już po webinarium bezpośrednio u mnie SMS-em, mailem e, lub telefonicznie I, i z przyjemnością odpowiem ja lub e, w, we współ z kolegami na, na Państwa pytania. Donc pour résumer, Tonic c'est une variété facile en verger avec un goût intense et une grande capacité de conservation. Także podsumowując odmianę tonik, jest, jest to no jabłkiem łatwym w uprawie, o pełnym i orzeźwiającym smaku oraz bardzo długim potencjale, potencjale przechowywania. I pour finir ce webinar, parlons maintenant du nouveau porte-greff M200. Na zakończenie porozmawiajmy teraz o nowej podkładce M200. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Clément Compagnon. I'm working at IFO as Apple Breeder and a part of my job is uh, working on the rootstock evaluation for IFO Dalival. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Frédéric Michaud. I'm in charge of subsidiaries and nurseries for Dalival Group. And in parallel, I'm in charge of Italian and Central Asia uh, markets. I'm going to share a presentation of M200. I'm going first to speak about Dalival Rootstock Strategy. Dalival is involved in three main programs in the world. Geneva in US, East Melling in UK, and PFR in New Zealand. Dalival targets uh, is not to launch rootstocks by any means, but to find technical solutions to various problems and to provide answers to fruit growers' expectations, such as increasing productivity, proposing different types of vigors, adapting growth stock to different soils, but also to different varieties, and of course, finding root stocks with disease resistances. In conclusion, our main target is to select the best selections for each range of vigor. Just to give you some key, key figures, Woodstock takes 15 to 20 years, then testing it within different conditions takes another 15 to 30 years. So in total, 30 to 50 years until the commercial development. Today, Dalival has around 55 to 30 years experience with HAM200. Now we are going to watch a presentation of HAM200 from Feli Fernandez from East Mailing Research Station. 
So I'm Feli Fernandez. Welcome to um, East Molin um, Research Station, part of the NIAP group. Um, I am one of the senior breeders here at East Molin, and I'm responsible for rootstock breeding. So M200 is um, derived from a cross carried at East Molin in 1971. The 1990s, it had moved to international trials and it has been evaluated in uh, France, um, Italy, as well as Germany. Now we have got quite a lot of data comparing M200 with M9. It has got better disease resistance, so it's not fully resistant, but it has some tolerance to uh, phytofracactone, so crown um, rot. Um, European canker it shows much better performance than M9. Um, and also it has got some fire blight tolerance. Again, not a full resistance, but much improved from M9. Um, in terms of productivity, it's also more productive um, and it has um, with a comparable range of fruit size. It has got a very seamless graph union, so it produces a very stable tree in the, in the orchard. Um, also, it does reasonably well on replant conditions, so it's, it's, it's an option for that kind of orchard as well. I will give you a, a quick summary about M200 tolerances. So we can see that uh, M200 uh, has a, a lot of improvement uh, regarding disease resistance compared to M9, especially for fire blight uh, resistance. It doesn't produce so much uh, soccer and burnage, uh, which is uh, very interesting uh, because of weed control. Uh, it's well adapted in replant situation and uh, if we compare uh, this resistance level between M200 and G11, uh, we can see that uh, both uh, rootstock have uh, almost the same level of resistance. So now I will present you some uh, rootstock trial results from uh, four different uh, resource stations uh, over Europe. So the first uh, rootstock trial is a uh, golden rhinoceros planted in uh, 2012 at IFO uh, Delival. The second one uh, is planted at Langbourg, uh, South Tyrol in Italy with Gala Buckeye in uh, 2014. The third one is uh, planted at CTFL La Morinière with uh, Delinet in 2015. And the last one is planted at Heideg, Austria, with Galaval in 2017. Uh, so we will talk first about uh, Vigor. Um, so in uh, the chart, uh, Vigor uh, um, is, uh, is measured with a trunk circumference uh, 20 centimeters above the graft union. Uh, this measurement allows us to, to sort uh, rootstock uh, by their ability to grow. So we can see that in both the rootstock trials, so the first one, which is uh, Golden Rinders at IFO, and the second one, Gala at Limbo, uh, we can see that M200 is much more vigorous than M9 Pajam 2 uh, in this location, with about 40% uh, more vigorous than M9. And at Langbourg, uh, we can see that M200 is about 40% uh, more vigorous than M9337. Uh, and uh, then if we compare G11 between M9 and M200, we can see that G11 is a medium bigger. So in the next two trials, which are Dalinet, La Morinière, and Galaval in high day, uh, we can see that M200 is also 20% more vigorous than, uh, than M9. Uh, M200 is generally more vigorous than G11 for about 5 to 10%. But uh, in some cases, depending on the soil and weather condition, but also depending on the variety, uh, the difference of vigor between G11 and M200 can be, can be more or less the same. Uh, what you need to remember is that on average M200 is about 20 to 25 percent more vigorous than M9 Pajam 2. So now let's talk about cumulative uh, production. Uh, in the following chart, uh, chart, we will talk about kilogram per tree. 
so in this trial, uh, Golden Rinders at E4 and Gala at Langbo, uh, we can see that M200 has a much higher production than M9 for about uh, 50 to 60 uh, percent, and also that uh, M200 is more productive than G11 for about uh, 30 percent. In uh, the two other trials, which are Dalinette La Marinière and Galaval Heideg, uh, we can see that M200 has an higher production than M9, then, but depending on the situation and the variety, uh, these increases can be more or less important. Uh, the important thing to remember is that in most cases, M200 has a much higher production per tree than M9 type, and depending on the situation, M200 is often uh, better than G11, and sometimes it's very close to it. And now I'm presenting you the percentages of fruits with a range size uh, over 70 millimeters. Um, so in this result, I present you uh, three different rootstock trials, which are Golden Rinders at Ifo, Buckeye at Langbourg, and Dalinette at La Morinia. In this result, we can see that the proportion of fruit with a size over 70 millimeters is very close between M9, G11, and M200. Just a few percentage difference in either direction. So it's important to remember that even if the productivity of M200 is much higher than M9, you keep the full range of fruit size compared to M9. So now I'm giving the floor to Frédéric. Here, we did some economic calculation using our Rousseau trial results. In this test, there are three replications of randomized trees per rootstock. The planting density is the same. These calculations take in consideration prices for each caliber. The chart represents the cumulative turnover in percentage after 10 years of production based on M9 Pajam 2, which is the reference with 100%. In conclusion, with M200, you earn three extra years of turnover compared to M9 Pajam 2 after 10 years representing a 57% increase of income. Here, we have done the same work with Gala Brookfield. This chart represents the cumulative turnover in percentage after seven years of production based on M9 Pajam 2, which is a reference with 100%. In conclusion, with hand 200, you earn two to three years, extra years of turnover compared to M9 Pajam 2, representing 100% increase of income, which is really impressive. To summarize, M200, M200 is 30% more productive than M9 produce the same range of food size as M9, and it's 20 to 30 percent more vigorous than M9337. We would recommend to use M200 in the following conditions. For varieties with a weak or medium vigor, in areas affected by fire blight, for B-axis or multi-axis growing systems where vigor is necessary, in replanted soil situation with soil fatigue, but also for organic cultivation where nitrogen supply is limited. Also, M200 produce less suckers, which is an advantage when you cannot use chemical weed control. In conclusion, M200 bring food to food growers a lot of advantages and increase the orchard performance. Thanks for your attention. 
vidéo aussi. Także dziękujemy, dziękujemy Frédéric. Także prosimy o pytania. Było już jedno pytanie na czacie o rodziców podkładki M200. Jest to od Tawa 3 przez Robusta 5. Donc, sur le, dans les conversations, il y avait une question pour les parents de M200, donc je donnais la réponse déjà. Et la question suivante, pytanie kolejne. Kiedy powinniśmy sadzić drzewka na podkładce Geneva G11, a kiedy na podkładce M200? Donc, la question suivante. Quand est-ce qu'on devait planter les arbres sur le Geneva 11 et quand sur le M200? Alors, euh, le M200 est un peu plus vigoureux que le G11, donc on le conseillerait dans des situations où on utiliserait des variétés euh, plus faibles ou dans des situations où il y a un fort manque de vigueur euh, dans les sols et où le G11 ne, ne suffira pas. Et en fait, en, en situation de replantation, euh, le, le G11 est plutôt comparé à un M9 et M200 encore un peu plus vigoureux. Także M200 lepiej nadaje się do słabszych odmian, które potrzebują większej siły wzrostu i w sytuacjach, w których brakuje właśnie drzewkom siły wzrostu. Tam, także więc sadzimy M200 w, w sytuacji, gdzie G11 jest niewystarczająca i nie daje sobie rady. Por, no, ogólnie porównujemy G11 z M9 w sytuacjach replantacji, a M200 jest po prostu silniejsza, większą siłę wzrostu ma. Jeszcze tylko dodam, że zalecamy również M200 do nasadzeń, do nasadzeń wieloprzewodnikowych, bo tutaj sobie doskonale daje radę. Żarzutę, które były plantacją multiax, jest très bien aussi M200. Il y a une question, Mirek. Il y a une question, Mirek. Oui, je, oui, oui, justement. Kolejne pytanie na czacie, czy M200 była badana pod względem mrozoodporności? Donc la question, est-ce que M200 était e, évalué par rapport à au foie? Est-ce que ça résiste bien au foie? Alors on n'a pas de données là-dessus. Euh, toujours est-il qu'il y a un des parents qui est à Ottawa 3, qui a été sélectionné au Canada, euh, qui a une résistance au foie. Alors potentiellement il peut l'être, mais ça n'a pas été prouvé. Na, dzisiaj, na dzień dzisiejszy nie mamy jeszcze wyników w tej sprawie. Jeden, jedno z rodziców to jest Ottawa 3, to jest e, podkładka kanadyjska, która jest bardzo odporna na mrozy i na zimno, ale nie mamy jeszcze e, odpowiednich badań i potwierdzeń, e, że w przypadku M200 też tak jest. Donc, si vous avez d'autres questions sur le M200 ou sur Tonic ou Canopy, euh, n'hésitez pas à revenir vers euh, Mirek ou vers l'équipe d'Alival après ce webinar. Si vous avez d'autres questions sur le thème de la M200 ou de la Tonic ou de la Canopy, nous vous demandons de vous de moi ou, comme je l'ai dit avant, par mail ou SMS. Donc pour conclure sur le M200, c'est un porte-greffe qui, de par ses performances en verger et ses tolérances, va euh, générer un bon comportement de l'arbre dans les situations où le M9 souffre. Donc, je podsumowując tak jednym zdaniem podkładkę M200, dzięki swojej dobrej produktywności, dobremu rozwojowi drzew, drzewka i drzew ogólnie i swojej tolerancji M200 zapewnia lepszą wydajność w sadzie w warunkach, w których podkładka M9, M9 zmaga się z trudnościami. I pour terminer, les mots de Thierry Ligonier. I na zakończenie kilka ostatnich słów od e, naszego dyrektora Thierry'ego Ligoniera. Merci. Nous espérons que vous avez apprécié cette, ce webinar. Mamy nadzieję, że spodobało się Państwu to pierwsze nasze webinarium. Ce, ce webinaire sera, sera suivi de journées sur le terrain dans votre pays à la prochaine cueille 2024. Podczas e, przyszłorocznych zbiorów odbędą się otwarte dni w sadach doświadczalnych poszczególnych krajów, aby zobaczyć te nasze doświadczenia. Vous êtes également les bienvenus en France et n'hésitez pas à demander à Mirek e, de vous organiser une visite ou de poser toutes vos questions. Zapraszamy również do odwiedzenia naszej firmy Dalival IFO we Francji. 
Również proszę o kontakt ze mną w sprawie organizacji takich podróży właśnie do Francji lub zadania, zadawania wszelkich pytań. C'est la première fois que nous organisons ce genre de webinaire et il y a des imperfections, mais nous vous remercions de votre compréhension. Jest to pierwsze nasze webinarium tego typu, także za wszelkie niedogodności, imperfekcje przepraszamy i postaramy się w przyszłości poprawić to, co nie wyszło dzisiaj. Notre objectif de toute équipe, c'est d'être le plus proche de vous et c'est un moyen pour nous aussi d'être à côté de vous et avec vous. Celem naszym jest jak, być jak najbliżej sadowników ze wszystkich krajów, dlatego stąd organizacja, organizacja tego typu spotkań. Merci d'avoir participé à cette réunion. Dziękujemy bardzo za uczestnictwo w dzisiejszym spotkaniu. Merci aussi aux stations qui nous ont transmis leurs résultats d'études. Dziękujemy za udział w spotkaniu stacjom, które przesłały nam swoje wyniki. Et un merci uh, tout particulier à Ségolène Dandin du CTIFL. Spécialne podziękowania dla Ségolène Dandin z CTIFL. Félix Buchele du KOB. Félix Buchele z KOB. Le Félix Fernandez du NIAB uh, Ismaling. Félix Fernandez z NIAB Ismaling. À toi, Mirek, pour la traduction. Dla mnie, dziękuję bardzo. Et à toute notre équipe euh, IFO et Dalival. Et à tout notre équipe IFO et Dalival. Merci. Merci et bonne soirée à vous tous. Merci et bonne soirée à vous tous.